Okay, so we'll start off with a little bit of backstory on Florina Beach. Florina Beach is a tourist destination originally said to be near Lith Harbor, but it was actually on the complete opposite side of Victoria Island to the east. Now, as far as I can tell, Florina Beach has always been in the game. I can't find any information regarding its release or ever being like brand new content like every other area was, so I'm assuming it's been in game since the very beginning. Now aside from that, the art assets kind of reflect the same very early art style that MapleStory had at the time, and if I recall correctly, Florina Beach was actually the highest level area prior to Orbis and El Nath being released on Maple's official global release. Eventually, in version 24, Omega Sector was added, which tied in a small quest line to Florina Beach. And then way later, in version 104, in the Legends update, Nautilus Harbor kind of expanded out a little bit and was linked with Florina Beach, which added a few more quests related to the area. Unfortunately, in version 150, during the Rising Heroes Elite update, Florina Beach was closed, along with a couple other areas, due to supposed future renovation. And while some of the closed content was actually reworked and released over time, Florina Beach was abandoned and, as of the recent KMS update, completely removed from the Victoria Island region map. Now, that doesn't mean that it'll never be revamped, but it's already been a few years and things don't really look like they're headed in that direction, especially with content like Gold Beach, which is just a bigger, better tourist destination than Florina Beach. So anyway, getting into it now, while in Lith Harbor, you can speak with someone named Payson who asks if you want to head to Florina Beach, a beach where the beautiful sunshine and mind-numbingly spectacular view of the ocean awaits you. You just have to pay for the travel expense. And whenever you're ready to leave Florina Beach, Payson just waits around for you to take you back to Lith Harbor. When you arrive though, there are three hula girls with very similar names, Rael, Riel, and Roel. Riel greets you and tells you that she has a job for you. Florina Beach is renowned for delicious coconut juice, along with tropical fruits and seafood. So she wants you to collect those things for her. Fresh coconuts from the right side of the beach. And after, she wants some more coconuts for some coconut juice, Lorraine claws for the meals, and lupin bananas for dessert. Afterwards, Riel says that she needs more materials since more tourists are being booked, and so simple Lorraine claws just won't cut it anymore. In addition to the same things that you gathered before, you also need clang claws for the main course. And after all that, she tells you to drop by every once in a while and she'll have a job for you. And she mentions that Phelan's been trying to create some new recipes and will probably need some more fresh materials. At a different time, Riel also tells you that if you're looking for a peaceful vacation, you'll have to come back at another time. The beach isn't as peaceful as it once was because a monster by the name of King Clang arrived with a warm current to take over the beach. Now, King Clang is described as being covered by a gigantic turban shell and controlling other monsters with its powerful strength to reign over Florina Beach. Everyone in Florina Beach is afraid of the monster because no one knows when they'll be eaten. But the three girls have come up with a solution though. One of them will be offered to King Clang as a living sacrifice to save the villagers. Riel mentions that King Clang didn't even ask for a sacrifice though, and she kind of recounts that the story is in fairy tales and books. A beautiful young maiden sacrifices herself to save the village, a brave girl that hasn't even blossomed yet. And she says that it's an important role and very romantic. So this is kind of just your average virgin sacrifice, maiden sacrifice, damsel in distress thing. However, they haven't decided who will be the heroine yet. All three of them want to take the role. So they want you to decide who in a fair manner. And they ask you to become the judge and make sure that nobody is cheating. So to begin with, Rael starts by telling you that she isn't confident because she's supposed to defeat Tortis. She says that she's cowardly and faint-hearted, but she really doesn't want to lose. So she asks you to do it for her, basically. For Riel, she whispers over to you that their plans aren't going as they thought it would. They need to defeat all the clangs crawling on the beach, but she's also too scared. So you cheat for her as well. Now the text here says King Clangs for some reason, which makes no damn sense, but in the actual quest, it just means the regular clangs, just a text error. And finally, for Roel, she asks if you were who Rael talked about, hoping that you're an honest judge and that you won't help her just because you know each other. And she, Roel, I know it's pretty confusing, but Roel has to defeat Lorangs, 
And since you don't seem busy, and you haven't helped Rael yet, you'll help her instead. Maybe. You do, of course. But... <laughs> After helping all three, Riel says that they asked you to be a fair judge, but you helped them cheat. And not only that, but you helped all three cheat, and not just one of them. She says that you've disappointed her, and she'll never forgive you, but that all endings of this kind of story include a brave and handsome warrior that rescues the damsel in distress and defeats the monster. And in order to complete the story with a happy ending, you have to take up the role and defeat King Clang yourself. Of course, once you awaken King Clang and you defeat him, his dying words are that he just wanted to enjoy his sunbath. But once you return to Riel, she is absorbed in the role and says that she was worried sick over you and couldn't sleep at all. The text in the quest has her name as Rael, which is wrong though, of course. And she says thanks and asks how she can pay you, but acts surprised as if you don't need anything, even though you haven't even said a word yet. But she calls you brave and modest and a real warrior and she'll never forget your name. And when you talk to the girls again, both Rael and Roel mention that you're famous for getting the job done. That's about it for the actual, like, main area of Florina questlines. But there are a couple others that tie in. So, while in Omega Sector, Kevin the soldier was driving around the neighborhood and picked up a ripped travel ticket. He kind of laments about wanting a day off and being able to leave for vacation, and you kind of just help him look for the other half. And after you find it and help him out to get cleared for a few days off, he can't actually fully make use of the time. So he gives you his half of the pass. And he mentions that the back of the VIP pass card says Nana, the tour guide in Ludibrium. Ludibrium? I have no idea how to pronounce it. <laughs> um, Nana? Nana? But bringing both of the VIP pass pieces to her, she explains it as no ordinary ticket because it allows you to freely teleport back and forth from continents to Florina Beach. It's a special item that can't be reissued. And she says that she prefers the skies in Ludibrium and that she has no use for it. So she directs you to another tour guide in Orbis named Shuri, who might know what to do with the ticket. So you make your way to Shuri, and she says that in order to fix the ticket and apply spells back to the ticket, you're going to need 50 star pixie star pieces and 30 lunar pixie moon pieces, both of which are found at the park in Orbis, along with three diamonds. Once the ticket is restored, she tells you that whenever you want to visit Florina Beach, you can speak to her or Nana, Nana, or Payson. Now, additionally, there is an older quest called Traveling Around Maple, where Olaf from Lith Harbor would take you to numerous famous spots around Maple World, Flarina Beach being one of them, where you can enjoy some cold watermelon while chilling out under the glaring sun. And there's a really small section of the Evan quest involving Riel from Florina Beach, who helps prepare some tropical fruit punch as a gift for Olaf to convince him to sail to Slumbering Dragon mm. Island. Now, during the version 104 Legends update, when Cannoneer was introduced, Nautilus Harbor was connected to Florina Beach through a series of small islands and piers. And this included a few new quests as Florina Beach became more prevalent in relation to the Nautilus and its crew. So, when Nautilus Harbor was connected to Florina Beach, Payson was moved to that area and mentions that the number of visitors to Florina Beach has decreased due to the pigs from Blue Ribbon Beach, which were scaring everybody away. In relation to the Nautilus, when Valerie learns that Prince Cheryl has professed his undying love to Kieran, she doesn't want him involved with her captain. So, she tries to prove that he's a coward by showing him gross things. And when nothing works, she asks you to fetch Lorraine Claws from Florina Beach and pinch Cheryl with them to make him cry. But when you do so, apparently in whale culture, they use Lorraine Claws to pinch those that they want to marry. So, Prince Cheryl just kind of assumed that you proposed to him. When Cutter finds out you've been doing stupid errands for Valerie, he tells you that you need to be protecting the Nautilus and the nearby area. And he's been receiving reports that Florina Beach is being overrun with Clangs and Larangs, so he sends you to Porche in Florina Beach. After clearing out the crabs and stuff, Porche asks you to remove the torties that are taking up all the best sunbathing spots on the beach. And afterwards, Porche talks you into fighting off a huge mutated creature lurking on the other side of the island, King Clang, again. But once you've defeated it, Porche mentions that he can now build his golf course on the beach. 
And while in the area, a woman named Poopa asks if you'd like some of her premium organic coconut juice made from the coconuts from Florina Beach. You just have to fetch the coconuts for her. And when you return, all the way back to the Nautilus, Bonnie is plugging up a hole in the bottom of the ship with her fingers. And she asks for some glue that only Bartol knows how to make. So when you ask Bartol for the glue, he tells you that he needs torty shells from Florina Beach to make it. And that's about it for all the connected quests and stuff. Overall, I'm glad that other characters and situations in other areas tied into Florina Beach. I find that important to include in MapleStory's lore because it helps the world feel just more alive and connected and stuff. It's like a character from Omega Sector was tired of work and wanted to go on vacation. And a ripped ticket that he found needed to be fixed by the tour and travel guides from around the world. And Nautilus Harbor just being expanded into the area, the crew took on the responsibility of keeping Florina Beach safe. And those parts are just really, really cool. The Virgin Sacrifice Damsel in Distress tropes are funny, but uh, the Florina Beach area quest itself is not the most interesting, but it's fairly short. That's okay for such a small area, you know? So normally I try to get footage and incorporate everything relevant to the area that I'm talking about as I go over it, but uh, this video had to be just a little bit different since there's no way I could record anything. It's basically impossible to get in-game footage of anything Florina Beach related, just because nearly everything related has been removed in one way or another since the content was blocked off and other areas have also gone through their own revamps. Gold Beach essentially fills the exact same purpose as Florina Beach as just this touristy vacation spot that's been overrun by monsters lately. So, yeah. Anyway, that's all I can think of for Florina Beach and its related lore. It's basically been written out, and there wasn't too much to begin with, but I can see why some people enjoyed the scenery, and they kind of look back at some of the oldest original content with fondness. But, if there's anything important that I'm missing, let me know.